The first step in starting to build a forecast is to organize the data. And sometimes this is the hardest part, as it's difficult to get data in a format that you need. In this case, uh, I've got data from McDonald's Corporation, and I've managed to get the financial data from 1999 until 2009. What you'll see first is a profit and loss or income statement, and then below that we'll have a balance sheet, and you'll notice that my years are all lined up. For instance, in the U column here, it's 1999, and that's the same in the balance sheet. I show a balance sheet. This is a simplified balance sheet as there's more items that are normally in a company's financial statements, but I'm trying to aggregate and simplify a bit. And here's the liability side of the balance sheet, the shareholder's equity portion here, and then that's the end. After the balance sheet, I've got a simplified cash flow statement, and in finance, we use cash flow statements a little bit different than we use them in accounting. Uh, in fact, in some cases, people will look at things like simple cash flow, where we'll just take net profit and add back depreciation. But I've also got a, a demonstration here of the the working capital changes, just so we understand what's happening there. And then we've got retained earnings. Important to understand in the balance sheet where retained earnings start, what gets added to retained earnings, which is profits what gets deducted, which is dividends, and in this case there's other items which I've just grouped under this line 69 others. The next thing is fixed assets, and we can see that a company starts off with a beginning level of gross fixed asset, this is the price that we paid for it, and then if we bought any new fixed assets in the year, they come in here, and that gets us our ending uh, gross fixed assets. Then we have accumulated depreciation, as we're depreciating those assets over time. We have a depreciation charge in the profit and loss statement, so I'm gonna shoot up to the profit and loss statement and see there's our depreciation charge of 10110. I'm gonna come down here and see our depreciation charge 10110. There's some other items that we've had in the past which I've grouped all as other, and that basically, are, those are the financial statements that you need to begin to forecast, of course, Formulas are set up already where the EBITDA in this case is the sum of these two. We can highlight these two items right here and look down at the bottom right and we'll see sum 7996. That does match up with this sum which we can also press F2 and look at the sum or we can look over here in the formula bar and we can see that it's sum equals AE5 to AE6. This is AE5. So this is column AE, and this is 5 to 6. We can see that other formulas are in place, so that looks good. And basically that wraps up the session on the financial statement and arranging it before we get into our forecasting.